Hello, Mari. How are you? Fine, fine. Good to hear about you. I'm great. Uh, good to, to see you. Uh, let me introduce uh, uh, Mariana worked with me in the Petro National Agency and the Superintendent of Development Production. She's a vice superintendent. Please, do you want to, to introduce yourself, Mari? Please. Sure. Uh, my name is Mariana Cavadinha. I'm current uh, deputy superintendent of develop and production in ANP, which is the regulate oil and gas regulator in Brazil. I am a petroleum engineer, and I look forward to meet you guys and explain a little bit about the opportunities in Brazil. Great. Uh, do you want to introduce you, Judon? Judon is a, a, a SP. SP uh, President Board, do you introduce yourself, please? Yes, uh, thank, yes. You very, thank you very much, Iara. Can you hear me very well? Yes. Thank you very much, Iara, and uh, we are very glad to welcome you, uh, Maria Cavadinia. So we will be very, very glad to have this lecture. Over to you, Iara. Thank you. Okay, uh, I think we can start uh, to not be late in your schedule. <laughs> sure, let me try to share my presentation here. I can't, I, I don't work with Zoom <laughs> most of the time. I usually work with uh, Teams, but I, I, I think I can. Okay. 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 Can I see my slides? Yes. Okay, oh, thank you very much for the invitations. Uh, I, I'm always very glad when I, I have the opportunity to talk about Brazilian, Brazilian production, oil and gas production, and also about the fields and opportunities that we have here and, and share with, with all the academy and companies and so on. And uh, thank you very much again for the invitation. Uh, as I mentioned, I work in the AMP, which is the Oil and Gas Authority in Brazil, and I'm deputy superintendent, and our superintendency is responsible for all the contracts during the production phase. So when the, uh, the block has a, a commodity and starts to be a field, then we have to, to oversee the, the, the contract and the activities and production of of the Brazilian fields. So Brazil has three different in uh, and production environments. We have the conventional, uh, the onshore, which is the, uh, let me see if I can show, I don't know if I can show my, my never mind. But we have the on, onshore basins, but we also have the conventional offshore where the production started in the, in the, offshore. And also we have the pre-salt. Here we can see the pre-salt polygon, which is uh, some special areas that uh, the government has started to have a, a production sharing agreement contracts. Uh, but uh, we have more than 400 fields and areas in Brazil. And the production is around 4 uh, million Billion, million of barrels of oil per day, uh, 3.8 million uh, of equivalent oil. Uh, regarding the, the uh, oil, we have more than 3 million barrels per day and 134 million cubic meters per day. And here in this graph, we can see the, the division among the environments that I mentioned. So the total production, 75% is coming from the pre-salt uh, fields, and around 20% is coming from conventional offshore, and 5% is coming from the onshore basins. Uh, also, we, we, we also publish the reserves. Here we can see a plot of uh, last year reserves, but uh, reserves, my, but I, I will show for you guys the, the newest number that we released last March. Uh, NEP has a dynamic panel of the reserves, so we can Google. 
I, I, I will send the link also in the, the last slide, but you can see the total pro Brazilian production and also some uh, new data of reserves. And uh, you can see here the distribution of the reserves among the country. And you can see, for example, the Rio de Janeiro or uh, the states where the pre -salt, most of the pre-salt fields are we can see that they have most of the reserves. So we, if you click in the, the map, you can see the reserves of each uh, state of Brazil. But our reserves are around uh, 13 billion of barrels of, of oil, the proven reserves, I mean, and the total, reser uh, total reserves, including 3P, is more than 24 uh, billion of oil. I mean, this is why I'm showing just oil. But of course, you have the same for gas. So we can go uh, can go in the panel and see also the gas reserves uh, among the, the fields. And one thing that's very important that we classify also the fields according to if the field is mature or no mature. So we can, we can see that among more than 50 50, we have for gas, for example of the reserves are in, in major fields and 47% 47, 47% on no major fields on new fields so it, it's a very good because we we are for example uh, implementing some policies in, in order to increase the production in the major fields because we know that pre salt is already uh, growing but we need also to focus on the major fields and here also uh, we can see, for example, as I mentioned, that we published recently the, the new reserves report. And we can see that uh, the reserves are increasing. So we increased around 11% to the reserves from last year. And also we have also a, a good reserves uh, index uh, considering the, the production. So we are adding more than we are producing. Uh, so it's a very important index also for as a country. Um, but we can see also more information in the NEP website. I will, I will send the link also. Um, so I, start, I will start to talk about a little bit about our major fields. So I selected two uh, pre-south fields to show to you that pre-south is always a reality in Brazil. As I mentioned, 75% uh, of Brazilian production is coming from offshore, from these pre-south fields that are located uh, in the offshore. Uh, and one of them, the most productive fields is Tupi, uh, is located uh, in the coast of Rio de Janeiro, is, was uh, declared, declaration of commerciality was in 2010, and you have participation of Petrobras, Petrogal, uh, and also Shell Brazil. And we have the distribution of participation. And it's located about 230 kilometers from the coast of Rio de Janeiro in the water depth of two more than 2,000 meters. And we can see also that we have a nine production, production units. So big production units, more than uh, 150,000 barrels per day. Uh, and uh, we can see also in this plot, the production is around 1 million barrels per day in the field. So it's a very good field, a very important field for, for Brazil and has a very uh, large volume in place as well. More than 3 billion of barrels of oil in place, and and the produce and sixty one wells are producing, and fifty one wells are injecting water and gas. So this field also, most of them in Presalto, they use water and gas as improving oil recovery methods, and they alternate in the uh, water and gas injection in the same well. So most of the wells have this capability to, to inject. And it is a very good method that we are still waiting the results, but we are very optimistic that we will increase the, the recovery, the oil recovery in the reservoir. 
So uh, we are very optimistic in having this kind of project in Brazil. Uh, another field that I selected was the Bulls field. It was uh, Declaration of Commerciality was in 2013. And it's on 100% by Petrobras in the uh, transfer of rights scenario, but this is a little bit uh, different because we have a contract with transfer of rights that was a fixed, a fixed volume that Petrobras was supposed to produce. And then we discovered that the volume was higher than the, the available uh, volume was higher than it was contracted. So the government uh, made another uh, auction. And then we have a, a second contract for the field where they, they share the same, the same area. But in, in the second contract is owned by Petrobras and two Chinese companies. Then I can send also the, the details about the, the percentage. But this field is located about 150 kilometers of the coast of Rio Janeiro and around uh, 2,000 meters off of the, of the water depth. And uh, nowadays we have four production units, all of them around, around 150,000 barrels per day, but we have plans for others. Uh, considering this new contract that I mentioned. So we are still studying the new development plan in order to approve uh, the new um, FPSOs for the area. And nowadays we have uh, 14 producers and 13 uh, injection wells, the same, injecting water and gas alternating. And we can, you can see here in this plot that Boozes is producing uh, around 600,000 barrels per day. And you can see that the Boozes and also Presalt wells, they are highly productive. So you can see that one well in Boozes produces around 50,000 50, barrels per day. So it's a, a lot of oil coming from one well. It's produced more than many fields in the onshore. But we so it explain a little bit the how why the south is very economic and is where the most of the investments are going in Brazil. And just talking about a little bit about also the other basins. So that, that, as I mentioned, is one of the focus of the government is not only incentivate the production in the result. Okay, result is very highly productive. It's okay. We 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 understand that. We and also we want that uh, that production. But also we 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 want to to incentivize the production in the uh, onshore and the other basins that are not uh, focused on the investments. For example, we can see here in the spot the the world average of thirty percent of the the recovery factor, we didn't achieve in other major basins. For example, Espiritu Santo's basin, we, we didn't achieve um, 30, 20% yet. And uh, considering the reserves, we, we still be around 20%. So it's something that we are working on. Uh, this plot says like 100% percent of increase in the recovery sector means like 200 million of barrels of oil equivalent in the new reserves, considered the onshore basin. And if you look for the others uh, on offshore fields, for example, Campus Basin, it's a major basin in offshore, we still didn't reach uh, 20 percent. So we have a, a lot to grow in major fields. Uh, in, and if we add 1% in the conventional offshore, I mean, excluding per salt, we, are, we can add 900 million barrels of oil equivalent as new reserves. And so this plot just showing the oil and gas life cycle. And our objective now with the major fields is to exchange the production life of these fields uh, in, including new developments in the in those fields, uh, and why major fields? That's something that uh, I always 
I always say that uh, we have already, we know the volumes, we have already the infrastructure, we know the formations, we have the historical data. So we, if you can add technology, for example, new wells or new enhancement oil recovery and new data, you can bring more oil and gas with lower impact. So that is very important nowadays with the transition, the energy transition. So uh, that's why major fields are another opportunity in Brazil for, for, for growth. And, and what is a major field for NEP? So we, we established in, the, in our resolution that is a field, major field is a field that produces more than 25 years of production or more than 70% of the estimated recovery, consider improving reserves, proven reserves. And we have around 300, 300 of major fields in Brazil. And, and now I'm gonna show some uh, government politics about the uh, these major fields, for example, we uh, CNPE, which is the National Policy uh, Energy Council, Council uh, established some guidelines. For example, we can ex extend the contraction. So the basically the contract they do they have a duration of 20, 27 years, and uh, by the end of those years, the the concessionary can send to ANP a new development plan and to be made uh, an extension. So we already approved more than 50 extensions. So it's something that we are doing now is receiving more development plans and approving based on new projects and new investments. We are approving the extensions of those contracts. And another uh, resolution was the reduct, uh, royalty reduction. We established, uh, CNPE actually established that we can we can reduce the royalties for major fields in order to maximize the recovery factor. I will talk more about uh, more about it later. And also, uh, we have a, a resolution also that established the the offer of uh, bidding the new bidding rounds that is like. Uh, more, it's easier now to, to make these bidding rounds in Brazil. Uh, so as I mentioned that I will talk about a little bit about the royalties reduction, royalties reduction. So usually um, a typical royalty uh, fee is around 10%. So we uh, established that if the operator can uh, submit to NP a new project that we will increase the production. For example, this, this is the historical data. And then we, you do that. If the new project produce more, for example, this gray area here, uh, the incremental production will have a different priority. Uh, for example, 70.5 or 5% uh, of priority. So it's a, it's a very good incentive in order to extend the, the life of the fields and have more jobs, more, uh, more income from the, the fields uh, and the major fields comparing with another project. So we want to add more um, economic incentives to the major fields. So more than, as I mentioned, more than 300 fields uh, are eligible for this kind of project. And it depends of the project. Any project could be eligible. We don't need to be like, for example, a new technique could be only ma management or, or if you increase the production, we can, can have this royal reduction. So this I'm talking about the open equity is the, is the, the way that NEP also, uh, has uh, promoting new bids. So we can also uh, include in the new bids fields that NEP uh, uh, receive it from the concessionary and also fields that we uh, uh, prove that were not being developed as, as it's supposed to be. So we can have an, a new uh, 
a new round of those fields. And this is important because a non-economical field for a big operator can be a profitable field for another one, for a small one. And so it's something that we are seeing in Brazil. We are uh, moving from a, a, a scenario or only the majors were uh, operators in Brazil. And now we have the majors are selling the fields for small uh, companies, sometimes uh, made by uh, new, uh, new professionals that are uh, working on those fields and making a lot of uh, a big increase of production. So we saw we have big ex examples of new operators that could increase, I don't know, like seventy percent of the production because they they were there uh, uh, managing the production. So it's a very good uh, movement that Brazil is doing now in the oil gas uh, industry. Uh, another thing that I, I would like to mention uh, is that we are promoting the access to our technical data. So uh, it started last year when NEP uh, made pub public uh, some data, most of the, the data of the Brazilian uh, onshore basins, so more than 23 onshore basins in the second phase. We had a pre-stock pre uh, data as well. So basically all the onshore basins data is available for download. And also recently we add some uh, offshore data as well. So last month we approved it. Uh, so now some well data, 2D and 3D uh, seismic data is available also. Uh, so we can download it or so it's a very good search of uh, information. And we expect that we can increase the, the effects of our data. We can increase the study of our data and also uh, bring more knowledge to our fields. It's a very good uh, initiative. Uh, here, I, I select some important links that, that summarize everything that I mentioned here. For example, the link for the technical data download, and also the link for reserves for more fluid production. So every month we uh, we publish the our monthly reports with the, the production and everything that I mentioned. And we have also other dynamic panels. We are a very, um, we are looking for uh, giving access to our data. So we have a Power BI, uh, dynamic panics where you can uh, select the operator, select the area, and see the, those plots, those production plots. So we, it's, uh, we are investing a lot in uh, uh, showing the, our information. And as a final remark, I just mentioned that we have a very good opportunities to revitalize uh, applying new technology, our major fields increasing the recovery factor in, in areas that already have the infrastructure. And also we have a, a very good opportunity for, to produce big reservoirs and result discoveries as to be and boosters. So thank you very much for, for the invitation and please be free to ask any questions. Thank you a lot, Mary. It's really nice presentation. If you could share with us, uh, you'd be really sure. useful. Uh, yes, uh, about the mature fields, uh, we had a lot of uh, classes with uh, representative from companies. And uh, I think that was last month, I had a class with a guy from Trident Energy, and he spoke a lot about Brazilian's field because Trident just bought a lot of fields, in Bra mature fields to invest in Brazil. And uh, this is a really nice opportunity. Mari, I have a question to you uh, regarding the gas. As you just told in the presentation that uh, in Brazil, you used to inject a lot of the gas that's produced in Presaud because you have a, lot, a high gas production also. And they use as a recover, second recovery mechanism. Uh, 
And I remember that uh, before left uh, ANP, uh, the government was applying some uh, incentives to the companies use this gas and start to produce this gas and sell this gas. And today, with the current situation of the market, uh, the, the thing about the Russia, Russia and the Ukraine, that the, the Europe is need more gas for warm uh, for the win next winter, and also about the, the world war. Uh, how is the new pan gas panorama in Brazil? There is some updates, uh, some uh, new gas dudes, uh, gas lines. How, how is the, the, the situation now in Brazil? And very good question, uh, Yara. Yes, is one of our concerns. When we uh, analyze a development plan, we, we care about the recovery of all fluids, not only oil. So for us, uh, exporting the gas or making those big uh, gas, oil and gas fields that produces offshore make uh, Transport this gas to onshore is a, is a challenge. Uh, we have two operating. Uh, uh, I, I forgot the name of gasodutos of gas line. Yeah. Gas lines. They have two <laughs> big uh, gas lines operating, but in the three, uh, the third of them, uh, Rota 3, is will start uh, this year. So we will add uh, more gas to the market, but for sure we are working to have another gas lines, other gas lines, but this is something that uh, depends of the economic, depends of the, to have uh, economical projects and, uh, and the gas in the, and the gas coming to onshore in a price that could be sell. So it's something that we are working. We are uh, talking with uh, some companies that are specialized, for example, in constructing the, ga the gas lines. And so it's something that we don't have in Brazil yet. Usually the, the operators that build, build the, the gas lines. So we, are, we just heard about a company that uh, is specializing in creating the gas lines. So it's something that we, we were very interested in about talking about it. So the oil and gas uh, regulation in Brazil allows it. So if, the, if uh, it's something that, uh, if the, the companies that decided to go to these directions, uh, for sure the regulation will approve it. We don't have any obstacle to this. So it's something that is, is very good to hear that, uh, for example, in Europe, we can also have those kind of contracts where the, we have one company that is responsible for building the gas lines and the other company is, is providing the gas. So it's something that the new gas law in Brazil is uh, permits and also incentivates this. So it's the is the where we are we want to grow so uh, i think your question was very good and it's our uh, our goal is to incentivate so any any kind of company that wants to to invest in the gas infrastructure and will be more than welcome in brazil to and we have gas to to sell it so it's a very good a good question is something that we are working on. So since we approve the development plan, but also we we fix to the companies some uh, milestones in order to them to uh, revise the project, the, their product uh, projects. For example, uh, if we approve a development plan that the first developer didn't include the gas exploitation. For example, the gas will be reinjected. Re 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 we also ask them to continue trying to find new solutions. So it's something that is very important too. Okay, the first solution, the, the easier one, the, the fastest one was okay, reject the gas. But I, I also have to continue studying to, in order to uh, invest in new technology. For example, one thing that is very, uh, important to Brazil is the CO2. We have a, a very, uh, depend of the field, 
we have this contaminant in the, the gas. So this treatment needs to be offshore. So this treatment is, is uh, highly uh, cost, costly, costs a lot, and we have uh, efficiency. So we can we we cannot we cannot achieve like the efficient that we go onshore. We cannot have it on offshore. So most of some parts of the gas needed to be rejected in order to not allowing the CO2 to be to go. So yes. it's something that if if we can increase the technology, the offshore separation and increase the technology, have more gas available is something that uh, we, we ask for the, for the companies to continue investing in, and have more available gas for, for example, send it to Europe or any other uh, region. Yeah. Petrobras has a project, right? A CO2 subsea separator is a new technology in the market. It, uh, I was uh, searching this in, uh, last week to develop a project here. And so, it is a re really nice approach. <laughs> so, yes. So maybe in the first development, they use the standard solution, but it's important to have additional project, product, projects in order to have new technology in the, the offshore. So if it's something that could be can be done, then can be improve the FPSOs, for example, in order to have a higher efficiency separation in the in the in the offshore. So so for sure we are incentivated. Great. Thank you, Mari. Uh, anyone have a question? Uh, may I just speak? Sure, go ahead. Oh, okay, yeah, hello. Uh, first of all, thank you for the presentation. Uh, it was really interesting, um, especially since, uh, I mean, I'm from Germany and we get now more and more also students from Brazil going here for petroleum masters. And my question would be actually like, I'm not 100% sure if you mentioned it already, what is like the the um, contract invite or the legal environment in Brazil? Is it like a production sharing agreements you have there or like ownership? Because um, I'm going in the direction like with with the change in Mexican government, they they changed their uh, legal environment again, and yeah, I, I'm just curious how it's how it's going in in Brazil, especially as you said that now like some majors are leaving the country. Yes, that's a very good question. That uh, we have three types of regimes. We have the concession contracts was the first of them, and was the most popular one. The the one that we have most of the fields. And then in 2010, the government decided to separate an area that I, I mentioned is the pre-South Polygon. So the, in this area, all the new contracts, any new contracts should be in the production sharing contracts. So only in this area and for the new ones, because inside this Polygon, we have all the contracts that were in the concessional that is still on. So we're still producing and also having this trust of, of rights. For example, Petrobras, which is the national company, mm -hmm. has these concession uh, uh, contracts, and they are selling to another another company. For example, that Yara mentioned, is Trident is a is a, is a British company, and and this uh, this con this contract will be still. Uh, available to be okay then try that we will produce these contracts and we can all and we we did that we extend the the phase so the contract concessionary contracts they have these uh, extension uh, uh, costs so they can add and ask for an extension so based on the new development plan and then we approve another concession or extension. So it's good that those contracts are still uh, working. And despite of we have another areas that are in the production sharing uh, contracts. Uh, so that's what how it's work uh, in Brazil. We had a, a third contract that was a transfer of 
rights, that it was a very specific contract with Petrobras uh, because uh, the government uh, wants to, to maintain its uh, investment uh, yeah. in Petrobras. So they, uh, they made a contract in the, as I mentioned, some part of the oil, so give the, the oil of, to Petrobras, but this is only in five areas, it's something very specific. So, so I, I would say that most of the contracts are concession and some of the production sharing uh, contracts only in this area. But uh, we have, for example, new bidding rounds, uh, the new, uh, all of them, uh, for example, the onshore, all of them in the, are in the concession. So we have, for example, new bidding rounds as concession, and we have also new bidding rounds in, in production sharing. So in the beginning of the, when the, 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 the area will be offered, we, we selected the, the contract and then uh, we beat that contract in the, uh, to the end. It's something like that. We don't, don't change the, the contracts uh, in, of any area during the, the phase. Oh. Something that I don't know if Mexico is, 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 is trying to do something, but in Brazil, for example, we maintain the, the active contracts until the end. Mm. Uh, this is very interesting that you even have like two types of contracts in your country. Yeah, yeah depend of the area, yeah. because uh, as I mentioned, pre-south is a very production uh, yeah. area. So in that moment, uh, the government decided to have more, uh, to more control of the decisions, for example. So it selected, okay, in this area, I will have only new, new contracts will be under the production sharing. But if you already had a contract active in the, this area, okay, we maintain, but new contracts will be on the production sharing. But it's something that we, we are also, uh, rethinking about as a government because it's something that also affects the economicity of the, the, the blocks. So it's something that the, the government may, may may change, but for for now we have this area and any bidding round in this area should be as production sharing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Yara, we can't hear you. Maybe you can unmute. Sorry. <laughs> so I think as you don't have any question anymore, we can uh, go to finalize the, the webinar. Before you finish, uh, could you take a picture to post in our LinkedIn page, please, Lee? Sure. I'm ready to take the photo. Okay. <laughs> one minute, one minute. Please call uh, who can the turn on, turn on your, your camera, please. Okay. One minute, okay? Okay, I'm ready to take the photo. Ready? Okay. Yes. One, two, three. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. Mari, perfect. thank you so much for your time to come here and share your knowledge. I know that your time is uh, so short. <laughs> well, thank you very much for the invitation. You can also send to, to me the link in the, if you want the, the post and I will send the presentation. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Uh, yes. Have a nice thank week. You so Bye. 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 <laughs>